Hi, I'm David Langton, Product Director at Matillion, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to get your first job built in Matillion ETL for Amazon Redshift. So let's get started. So let's get started building our first job. And if you've been following the previous videos or other setup guides, you already have your instance, you've already created a project and tested that you can connect to Redshift, and you've just landed in that project with these default jobs imported. So let's go, let's move on from there. So that we can quickly get some data into our environment, I'm actually gonna run this sample job DIM airport setup. What that's gonna do is create some tables for us and then load some data into them one, one from an Avro source, the other from a CSV. And when both of those tables are loaded, we're gonna then run the DIM airports transformation, which is just gonna join the airports to a list of state names, and then add those all to a dimension table. If I look at the bottom right, I can see that that job is running and where it's up to. And in a few seconds time, we'll have some data in our environment. And so if I look in the environment, and expand my default schema, you'll see the three tables that we just created. At this stage, of course, you might want to look into this job and see what parameters have been set and, and try and understand how that's working. I'm gonna create a brand new job and load some more data that we can use alongside the data we just loaded. In order to do things like data loads, we're gonna use an orchestration job. This'll do the extract and load part of the ETL pipeline uh, we'll look at doing the transforms a little bit later once all the data's already loaded into Redshift. So let's right click there and let's add an orchestration job, load flight data. Now I have 120 plus million records of flight data from the US over a 20 year time period already in an S3 bucket. Now what we're gonna need to do therefore is create a table to hold those results and do the load into them. So first off, if I look in here, there's a bunch of components that I can use, and under the DDL folder, there's a create table. So let's drag that onto the canvas, let's wire it up to the start component so that it becomes part of the flow, and then we'll just work through the parameters until all the errors have gone, and then we'll run it. So we need a new table name, I'm gonna call that raw flights. This will get tidied up, filtered, aggregated later, but this is the table that will hold the raw data. Now for the table metadata, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna to switch to text mode and paste in something I prepared earlier. This is a little laborious. We also have a load tool which will automatically guess most of this metadata for you so that you just have to review it. I now have a working create table that's gonna distribute the rows evenly on the Redshift cluster, but of course, if I want to set particular distribution or keys, I can. And if I right click and run this job, we now have a new empty table. So let's get that loaded with some data next. So to load the data then, uh, here's load unload. You'll see a whole bunch of components to load data from databases and from all sorts of external systems. Uh, we're just going to use the S3 load because my data is already in S3. And to do this, it's exactly the same. Drop it onto the canvas, wire it up visually so it becomes part of the flow, and then work through the parameters until everything looks valid. When the component turns green, it should be ready to run. Target table's nice and easy. It's the table we just created, raw flights. My data is in this bucket and all the files are prefixed with flights. The data is actually spread along multiple files and that works really well for Redshift so it can use all of the nodes to do the load. Now in this particular file, nulls are actually recorded as NA or not applicable. And we can enter that to make sure that that conversion happens on the load. We can also set any of the other copy options that we need to, to make the load uh, match our data file. Okay, that is now valid. That will hopefully work. Let's give it a go. 
Now, because I've already created the table, I can just right click and run this individual component. That's gonna take a few minutes to load all of the data. I can look in the environment and see any database queries or loads that are currently going on. And we can see there, uh, this is my copy. And right now we haven't made much progress. Excellent, so that's 123 million rows loaded. Uh, now for more advanced usage in the components, you'll find that we have a workload management component. What that's gonna allow us to do is make that load happen even faster by changing the number of workload management slots available to the S3 copy. Uh, and so if we go for two, it's gonna use twice the processing power and twice the memory in order to execute the next section at the cost of the cluster being able to deal with less concurrency during this time. And of course, if we're gonna do that for the load, we probably want to put it back again after we've finished. Also, if I wanna test whether this has changed the load time, I'm gonna change this to a replace table so that it's doing all of the operations every time I run it. And I can give that another run later and see if that improves the timings. But right now, let's move on to do a transformation job to make something out of all of this data. Great, and so as before, I can right click here, but this time I'm gonna add a transformation job transform flight data. Now once you're into a transformation job, you'll notice that the palette changes and you get a different set of components. What I'm gonna do is just switch to the environments tab. I'm gonna drill into these tables. Now this job's gonna use those raw flights that we just loaded. It's also gonna use the airports data. So I'm just gonna add those both to the canvas. And actually the very first thing I'm gonna do is get a feel for what this data looks like. So far we've loaded all of this data and we have no idea what it looks like. But if I highlight the raw flights, nip to the sample, we already expect there to be 123 million rows there. We can also take a sample and see what that actually looks like. So we can see we've got data going back all the way to 1988. I suspect it goes back even older and we haven't loaded it all in order. We've got the month, the day of the month, departure time, a whole bunch of delay reasons, the flight number, the tail number. Importantly, we've got the origin and destination airport. And if we look at the airports table and sample that, we'll see that that IATA code matches that origin and destination code in the flights table. And that's how we're gonna be able to join these things together. But before we get to that, I actually don't need all of that flight data. So let's see how we can filter that. If I search for a filter component, and exactly like in the orchestration job, I just wire that up, make it part of the flow, and work my way through the properties. And in this case, we just need to say, I'm only interested in data where the year is greater than or equal to 2000. And just like any other component in a transform, if I want to ensure that that's having the desired effect, I can get another row count. It was 123 million before, it's now just under 60 million, so clearly that filter's doing something right. Now we can join those two flows together. So if I uh, look for the join component, there we go. I'm gonna hook that up to the filter and to the airport data, and just work my way through the properties as usual. My main table is filter zero, which is actually the flights. Let's just alias that as F. And for the join, I'm actually gonna join on the airport's data twice. Once as the origin and once as the destination. And if for any reason there's a flight that doesn't have a matching origin or destination, that will get lost in this inner join. But if we need to change the join type, we can. And that's with relation to the main table that we set us a moment ago. We now need some join expressions. We need two because we're joining two things. All of the fields are available, as are all of the Redshift functions, because you can join on some pretty complicated expressions. In this case, it's not that difficult. We just need to join origin and make sure that matches the origin airport code. 
And for the destination, exactly the same, but with the destination field and the destination airport code. You can see that's validating the syntax as we go along, and if there's no errors, that should be fine. We can now do the output columns. I'm just gonna add them all. Because we've added the same table twice, we've chosen to prefix all of the output columns here with the table they came from to make sure we don't have a bunch of duplicate columns. Otherwise, if they were already unique, they've just been kept as they are. But you can change any of the output column names you want. We now need to make sure that that join is working okay. We may expect to lose a few rows in that inner join. It certainly doesn't look like we've lost a lot of data there. And we'll also just check and make sure the data looks okay in the sample. There's the flight data after the year 2000, as we expect. And if we scroll over, we should start to see some airport data on the side. We've got the origin airport and the destination airport fields all pulling through. So that looks good. There's a full range of transformation components to read data that's already in your Redshift cluster, to join it together, to apply some simple and very complicated transforms. Then eventually you'll want to write that back to a Redshift table. You'll notice here that we have, have internal and external components. The external components refer to keeping the data on S3 and accessing them via the Amazon Redshift Spectrum technology. We're just going to rewrite a table at this point, which is going to drop any table that already exists of the same name and write the result of this join into a new table. And actually, all we need for that is a new table name. I'm going to call that flights cleansed. We've actually only done a very simple filter and join here, but the possibilities are endless. And when I run this job, that's going to create that new table and bulk insert the result of this join and filter into it. That's the data set you would then present to your analytic users and BI tools to analyze. Now it's been partially denormalized. Excellent. So that's been written out now. Now just to finish this off, what we really want is to go back to that load flight data and add my transform flight data as part of this flow. Then this entire piece can run end to end and I can schedule that. I'm also going to add a note to explain to my colleagues how this job is working. And that's it. You've just created your first orchestration and transformation job inside Matillion ETL for Redshift. Great, I hope you found that useful. For more information, resources and support, head to matillion.com. Thank you.